In this video, we will show you how to connect your signal. We will also show you how to make a stop section in your C-Track and then how to connect that stop section to your signal to start your first basic automation. As you can see, your signal comes with a couple of plates to mount the signal and then you have a bag with goodies. In the bag, you'll see uh, several wire sets and the red insulators, which are also being sold under Merklin 74030. And then there's a sheet with uh, numbers on little stickers to be used on the signal. We'll take a look at the uh, three wire spools that come with the signal. The one here on the right is a two wire spool and it comes with red and brown wire and it has a two pole plug. It is used to get uh, track power, the digital track power to the signal. And it plugs in on the right side where you can see a two pin receiver. You can see tiny little tabs on the side of that green plug and those tabs prevent it to go in the wrong way. Here I'm trying it the wrong way, it doesn't fit. I have to flip it upside down the tab on the other side is lower, and now it will plug in. It's almost flush when it's seated well. And once again, this hooks up to your track, red and brown, and gives the signal its digital power. The two ends are soldered, pre-soldered, and you can connect that to your digital track power somewhere, or you can uh, put the spade connectors on it and then hook it up to your C-track. The second set of wires is uh, a triple wire and if you look closely you can see a red, brown and blue. It is used when you use a braking module, something we do not cover in this video. And finally there is the double red wire that is actually on a three pole plug. This is the wire we will use to power the stop section of our track. It plugs into the middle socket on your signal. And because of the tabs on the side, it will only go in one way. These two red wires connect to the bottom of the C-Track to power and unpower your stop track. So we have to connect these two spade connectors to it. You can clamp them or you can solder them to this wire. On our C-Track, we're creating the stop section by insulating the center rail those little pucos, they will be without power and that's why the train will come to a stop. So you start by separating the C-Track and getting the insulators that came in the package. You simply twist the insulators off that little H-shaped sprue. And as you can tell, there's a total of four of them. When you create your stop section, you probably want it to be at least two track pieces long. For this video, I'll use a clear track piece. It makes it a little easier to see what the stop section is. It's a little difficult to see, but the inside contacts, and I'm trying to point them out here, are the ones that you need to insulate. The inside contacts are the ones that are connected to the center rail. So I, put, I slide the red uh, insulator over that. You have to kind of push the contacts together to get it to slide on. And I'm doing the same on the other side. This may be a little bit better. You can see that it is spring loaded and you have to kind of go at it under an angle to get it to catch. I just want to go and there it goes and it's on. Try to straighten it out. Now, if I would click the track together, the problem is the other contact from the dark gray rail would still allow power to flow. It won't go this way, but it would still go that way back to my center rail on the clear piece, which means we need to do one more insulator on that side. So I pull the track apart, and now I'll put an insulator 
on the track piece. Again, you have to use the inside contact, you can see it here, I'm trying to push it in under an angle. And with a little bit of trying, it goes on. There you go. Now I can click these two together and I'll have one side of my stop section done. I also put the insulators on the other side of the stop section and now I'm ready to push those pieces of track together. Again, my stop section is done. In this case, it's only one track piece long. You want to make them at least two track pieces long, if not longer. All right, and now we go to the third portion of the video, and that is how to make the connections. The digital signal gets its power through the brown and the red wires, and you can simply get those off a piece of C-track. The brown wire goes to the outside rail, the red wire goes to the inside rail. The inside rail is marked with a B and the outside rail is marked with an O on the bottom of the C-track. So now that our signal gets power, we also need to hook up the two red wires. Both of them go to the center rail connections. One goes on the stop track side and the other one goes, just like I show here in the video, on the power track side. Again, these two both go to the inside rail. When your signal turns green, it connects both red wires and power from the right side center track will be allowed to flow to your stop section center track and your train will start to move. Now we will hook up the wires to the signal. Remember the two pole plug with the brown and red wire. It goes on the right side. Push it in till it's almost flush. And now I grab the three pole plug with the two red wires. Remember that powers our stop section and it goes to the center plug. And I'll plug in it until it's flush. And we're done with our connections to the signal. I will go ahead and slide the base plate on there. It's a simple matter of clicking it in and sliding it sideways so that I can mount the signal to the C-track. Time to test the setup. You can see the signal is set to stop and the train approaches the stop track. Once the pickup shoe is completely on the stop track, the locomotive automatically stops. On the right, you see me turn the signal to green and the locomotive takes off again. In this video we showed you how to hook up your signal, how to create a piece of stop track and how to connect that stop track to your signal. If you have questions, shoot us an email or visit us online at www.ajckits.com.